Hey everybody, I'm just testing the audio. We're gonna be going in about, uh, well, I guess like three, three or so minutes now. But uh, yeah, just testing all the audio and everything and I'll be on in a sec. Okay, here we go. Can you hear me now? Hello? Okay. I think this is the wrong mic. Huh. Okay, well, I might be on the wrong microphone right now, but I'll re-explain that. Everybody's saying we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? There, there might be audio situations throughout this entire stream. And if that is the case... Okay, cool. You can hear me now. Okay, sorry about that. Let me explain. Um, Alright, so 
I might end up having to do another audio fix in a sec when we switch over to um, with Sir Pro Grey. But basically what we're doing today is we are going to be crocheting some endangered species together. Uh, and this is part of a fundraiser that we're doing for the World Wildlife Fund. Every, uh, all the donations from today's live stream will be going directly to them. They are a an amazing organization, my favorite organization for supporting wildlife, um, endangered species, which is in turn helping protect our planet from climate change and just really, you should support them just in general outside of this. But if you support today on by donating on the live stream, you will also be able to download the PDF version for one of these patterns. Um, today we have uh, Simon the Sloth, this is by me. This is Oh, I'm gonna for, I'm gonna say it wrong. Makumeni, the black rhino. Sir Pearl Gray is gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, this is by Sir Pearl Gray, who you're going to see in just a sec. And this is Ruby the Red Panda by Lemon Yarn Creations. So we did a collaboration with all three of these Amigurumi artists. There's a video tutorial for each one of these, which is available right now at clubcrochet.com slash earthday2021. But if you donate you actually also get the pdf version you can purchase the pdfs on the website and all the purchases will go directly to the world wildlife fund or you can donate right here on this uh you can super chat or you can donate um wherever it is right there on the right and that will also get you a pdf so it's a really cool way that we're trying to raise money for this foundation um also there are kits available if you sign up for a membership this month uh you a portion of your membership will be going to the World Wildlife Fund. Um, if you sign up for a pro membership this month, you're going to get a kit with one of these three. You'll be able to, to, to choose one of the three kits. And a portion of your, of your um, membership will go to the World Wildlife Fund as well. Um, and we also have kits available. And a portion of those purchases will also go to the World Wildlife Fund. So we're really trying to make as uh, much as we can for the World Wildlife Fund. I won't be able to put little characters out for you, but I will give you a little shout out. So Ellie Dawn just donated 20 bucks to the World Wildlife Fund. So thank you so much, Ellie Dawn. Thank you. Um, that is really cool. That's a great way to start it. So thank you very, very much. And the, the reason I won't be able to be putting little things out is because I'm not going to have a lot of room because I will be introducing in just a second uh, Sir Pearl Gray, who's going to be joining us on the live stream today. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, the materials. If you are crocheting this along with us, <clears throat> you will need the following materials. Now, I'm going to be making Simon the Sloth, which means that I'm going to be using worsted weight yarn. I'm not going to be using all cotton. For the furry yarn here, this is 100% wool, and then a 100% uh, cotton for the face and, uh, yeah, for the face and the claws. Um, you'll need off-white for the face, black for the face, and a little bit of cotton brown yarn for the nose. Um, you'll And you'll need that wool for the body. If you're crocheting the black rhino, you're going to need gray and off-white. I like using 100% cotton, but whatever yarn you have would be good. Um, just whatever you use, try to make it sustainable. So uh, either make it so that it's recyclable or um, compostable. That's one of the reasons I really like using 100% cotton. You'll need safety eyes. We're going to be using 8mm safety eyes for any of the patterns. Um, and uh, if you're making Simon the Sloth, you probably want something that can help keep his hands together. Um, so that way he can hold on to things if you'd like to. Um, I like using super strong mini magnets. Here you can see some right there. And like I said, all of the materials that I'm using in this, uh, in these are all available in the kits that you get for signing up for a pro membership. Um, okay, so uh, yes, I can boop. Yes, I absolutely can boop the red panda for your donation. So this is for you, Ellie Dawn. Boop. <laughs> you dork. All right. Um, okay, so we're going to switch over now and uh, say hi to Sir Pearl Gray, who's going to be joining the stream today. Boop, boop, a doop, boop, a doop. All right. You're good to go. You can say hello, Sir Pearl Gray. He's been muted for a sec. And I think we have double mic on. Let us know if we are echoey. Um, and yeah, I think he's trying to figure out how to unmute right now. I'm not 100% sure. Hi, everyone. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, hello, Philip. Um, Cooperlicious just donated another $30 to the World Wildlife Fund. Thank you so much, Cooper. Um, and we'll boop, we'll boop the black rhino for you. Boop. 
<laughs> so, um, Sir Paul Gray is the designer of this beautiful black rhino. Would you like to say the name? I feel like I keep mispronouncing it. Yeah, so uh, it's Matsu Maini, and it's, uh, it means hope in Swahili. Um, so so I chose it just because uh, um, black rhinos are, they're found in Kenya, and Swahili is uh, um, it's one of the languages spoken in Kenya. That's so great. I love, I thought, like, once you said your name, uh, the name of your character, I was like, oh my god, that's so, <laughs> that's so much better than mine. <laughs> I was like, my, I just went with Simon because I thought Simon the Sloth. And I was like, oh, he, his has actual meaning behind it. That's so good. I love it. Um, I A lot of people are saying Philip is glitchy. I know. We can only get one of his screens to be like really uh, clear in um, and not glitchy. So his hands are going to be clear and uh, his face cam in the corner might be a little glitchy. We're sorry about that, but seriously, we tried really hard to fix it. It took us a long time to figure this out. Um, so I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, let's see, let's see. Oh, and let us know if one of us is talking like louder or quieter. I can mute, I can make myself a little quieter to make things match. Um, be very loud, but you can hear him just fine. Okay, great. Uh, and Jane just donated fifty dollars. Wowza, Jane! Thank you so much. Uh, and we've already booped Red Panda. We've booped the Black Rhino. So here's um, here is Simon the Sloth getting booped just for you, Jane. Boop. Yeah, we'll give, it, we'll give my little Rhino another boop too. Thank you, to, <laughs> thank you so much to everyone that's donated. This is like a charity that um, I don't know. It, it's very near and dear to my heart. So I'm glad that you guys are all supporting it. Yeah, same. I I just. Like I, when I approached, I, I knew you were going to be down like right away. I was like, okay, I did, I did this fundraiser last year. It didn't go that well, but it went okay. Uh, and then this year I was like, okay, we can up the game this time. I'll just get Sir Paul Gray. Cause I know he's going to be down. Cause I know he really cares about this just as much as I do. Uh, and then, and then I also reached out to Lemon Yarn Creations because she makes adorable animals, and I knew that she'd be interested as well. So I'm really glad this worked out. I think next time I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to like up it even more and get a few more Amigurumi artists into this as well because I think the more the merrier, and yeah, just like it would just be really cool to get a bunch of us involved because the more we get, the more it. What what's the word? Um, uh, Jules says it all the time. Uh. uh boat uh the when the water rises all boats float that's the that's the saying and oh. i totally i totally agree with that i also think that i have the audio going on one of these because i can hear myself hold on hold on hold on it's i got i got me open somewhere like the video itself is open Oh, well, I don't know where it is. That's okay. That's okay. Whatever. Um, okay, so I'm going to get crocheting. Sir Paul Gray is actually ahead of me. So I am going to try to catch up to him as fast as possible. Um, and Sparky the Gecko says, I wish I were allowed to donate. I understand. If you can't donate, I totally get it. Um, but what would be also helpful is if you like this video down below or and like um, our patterns. So if you go to the YouTube channel and check out Sir Pro Gray's most recent uh, pattern, which is the Black Rhino on our YouTube channel, that is a great way to also help try to support as much as you can. Um, and then another way to support is by actually crocheting these and sharing a picture of, of what you made in a crochet group that you like and just spread just to help spread the awareness of this fundraiser because this is an ongoing fundraiser this is um it's not just for earth day these patterns will forever be part of a fundraiser so if anybody ever purchases any of these three patterns the money will go to the world wildlife fund so everybody that makes it and then shares pictures online of like look what i made and part of my uh or by me making this i helped support um, actually protecting these animals so that's a great way to help um, support this project if you still can't you know actually support it mint and moment donated 10 another Carolina donated five okay we got double boops here I'm gonna get another animal in here for a boop 
Here is a um, an eagle. This is gonna be booped for mint and moment. I like this booping thing actually. It's kind of fun. <laughs> and then here is um, let's go with a sea otter for Carolina. Thank you so much for your donation, Carolina. <laughs> Boop. All right, let's put these guys to the side there. There we go. I actually just went to the zoo yesterday and uh, got to see, well, I got to see the red panda and the, the a black rhino in real life, which is crazy to me that a zoo has endangered species. I don't know. It, it gives me weird feelings. When was the last time you went to the zoo, Philip? Um, so I I went to the zoo for my birthday a couple of weeks ago. Oh, sorry, a couple of months. Uh, how when was it? It was back in March. So <laughs> how old am I? <laughs> a month ago. A month ago. It's time is time is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Time is a, not <laughs> even a thing anymore. <laughs> um. Yeah. So my zoo. Uh, so it opened up. Um, but it had. It, there was an event going on and it was just like a, a escape room but you would run around the entire zoo um in order to solve puzzles and escape the zoo that is so cool that is so cool yeah so there's still we, we still have to have very limited amounts of people yeah. um at the zoo at any given time so um it was really cool to have this event like we had to buy tickets for it and it was just it, it was fun like solving all the puzzles but then also having a chance to just you know check out all the animals again because it's been a while yeah it, that's what i was thinking too because we i live right near the zoo the, like not even a five minute walk from the zoo and i used to go all the time but i haven't gone in so long um one sec sasha donated 20 euro which is even more than 20 dollars <laughs> thank you sasha and this is a boop of a of not so much of an endangered species but uh, well, it is an endangered burb, I guess. Maybe burbs are, are endangered species. Who knows? They're an alien species. I'm I'm thinking that they're aliens. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out where these burbs are all coming from. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't gone to the zoo in so long. And I used to go all the time. Um, when I was studying anthropology, I would have to go every single... Uh, Every, well, I didn't have to go every day, but I would go every day to just look at the lemurs because I really, really like lemurs. <laughs> and um, I just forgot how much I missed the zoo. But it also gives me weird feelings, you know? Like, on one hand, I'm like, oh, I love the zoo. And then on the other hand, I'm like, oh, kind of a bummer seeing all these animals locked up. I understand that, at least at the San Francisco Zoo, a vast majority of the animals there are there because they... Um, they won't survive in the wild but right. it is kind of like i don't know it gives you a bitter bittersweet feel sometimes going there um and i i i understand that sentiment too and um like the zoo where i am in calgary uh they do a lot of conservation so i know that you know yeah. if i'm visiting the zoo that my money is going towards a lot of research and yeah helping serve these animals yeah i think it's ever since i um yeah, ever since I watched Tiger Tiger Jaw or Tiger uh, Tiger King, I've been more wary about like locked up animals. <laughs> right, right. You know? But yeah, um, what's your favorite? What what's your favorite animal to see at that zoo? What kind of animals do they got there? So um, we have we also have red pandas, which I always like love uh, popping by to see. But um, the red pandas at my zoo are quite old. Oh. Um, so it, it's sort of like a, a hit and miss um, if they're ever going to be out yeah. over there at the zoo. Um, but my favorite animals um, are the snow leopards. Oh, we had a snow leopard at our zoo. I was like, whoa, a snow leopard. How the hell do you guys get a snow leopard? <laughs> right. And it's and like they're so big and fluffy, like they're not really made for like our climate. Like they love being out in the cold, out in the snow. I, I always figured it was really cold where you were. Is it does, it's not that cold? Um, like it's super cold during like the the winter season, but um, come summer, like it's still pretty warm, and I always feel so bad seeing the snow leopards mm. like in the heat of summer. Yeah, we had a polar bear here, um, and it it actually got really old. It died from old age, uh, like a year or two ago, and I always felt the same thing. They would bring out huge blocks of ice for him every day um i think that was donated from some company 
and it was that was kind of cool to see like a giant block of ice be be put in the polar bear exhibit and he would just like sit on it it was on in like floating in the water um yeah they when he died he was so big that they had to bury him like 20 feet down in the ground oh, they couldn't oh. they couldn't cremate him or anything so <laughs> they had to like really dig it down 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 to be able to bury him i thought that was so interesting that like man i never thought about like disposing of a giant animal's body <laughs> and that sounds sad but it's just an interesting thing to think about you know right or yeah like even at a zoo like what do they do with the animals that pass yeah like because you can't yeah it's just really really interesting uh, Crafty Chats Cafe says that Dublin Zoo is the same. A lot of research and preservation e efforts. And I think that is um, more often the case. Uh, I think there are a few probably bad apples as far as zoos go. And I'm sure someone that worked at the zoo would be able to tell you, hey, don't go to this one or this one. Um, right. Because I think they com I think they talk to each other pretty, pretty often. Like, I know there's this huge um, database of, of zoo animals that you have to keep track of like what animals are where and and how certain animals are being taken care of and it's this giant database throughout different zoos at least that's what i've heard my friend uh used to work at the sf zoo and said there was this giant database between all the american zoos right so that was pretty cool carolina is gonna has to go but thank you so much again for donating carolina and uh, if you're able to stay or go, that is a-okay. Thank you so much just for joining in general. Oh, I'm supposed to do eight single crochets. See, I already oh. forgot my own pattern. <laughs> I think I got it open here. So what made you choose the sloth? So I actually was trying to crochet a sloth um, like a year or two ago. Uh, I think I just I just like I like the idea of sloths a lot. Um, just the fact that an animal can uh, survive in the wild at such like a uh, with such a lazy personality <laughs> and it's true like they really are just slow and lazy but they survive really really well and I just think that's so interesting um, I don't know how they're able to do it but it is a very interesting thing and also um, I'm fascinated by giant slots which are um, prehistoric the, yeah the prehistoric sloths. giant sloths just they're it's crazy when you see how big they were and it's really weird to think that there's no more slots that are even bigger than like a small dog yeah like, where did where did the slots go between that giant sloth and the little tiny sloth you know right it yeah I just I just think slots are an interesting animal in general um I originally wanted to do a sea turtle, and I made a kind of a cool prototype for a sea turtle. But then I saw your sea turtle pattern, and I was like, "Oh my god, the sea turtle is so cool! I I don't want to do a sea turtle anymore." <laughs> it's a really he's got a very very good sea turtle pattern. If anybody wants to make one, go check out Sir Progress Sea Turtle. It's adorable. And why did you choose the black rhino? Um. Uh, it's it, I, I watch a lot of nature documentaries um, and uh, recently I watched one about black rhinos and I often I, I just get very very sad when I see um, like when they talk about the threats yeah. and the conservation efforts for rhinos um, so I, I I figured um, like I've never really it's it's not a body shape that I've done very often yeah it's very interesting body shape so I wanted to give myself a bit of a challenge as well. Try try something very different than what my usual style is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I it is extremely it is a big bummer. Uh, the fact that rhinos, the reason that rhinos are endangered, is such. It's just a it makes you disappointed in humans, to be honest. Um, because certain animals, it's like oh they're endangered because we're getting rid of their. Uh, their homes which is very very sad but black rhinos are endangered for the dumbest reason we're just cutting off their horns and killing them if they don't have their horns it's just it's just stupid it's just so it's, stupid it's really sad and like a lot of the times too it's um 
for a lot of animals. Like one of one of the animals that I was also sort of playing around with um, was a pangolin. Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh, and very you know, like they they're they're hunted quite heavily for their scales, mm -hmm. um, just because they're used in um, Asian medicine. But uh, like I, I just have so many like little issues with um, things that aren't really like super super scientific. Oh yeah, yeah, like um, yeah. There, I mean, there's just a really fine line when it comes to uh, uh, what is that? What is it called? Uh, e e Eastern medicine, yeah, is that what they call yeah. it, yeah, and and yeah, specifically when it comes to like, even if it was, uh, uh, like it did help medicinally, which it doesn't, but even if it do did, it's not worth it. There's we have other medicine, like it's not worth right. it to kill the last of our of a of a species that has been evolving for ever. It's just such a bummer. Uh, Jane said that she's been making a pangolin for six months now and the scales took forever <laughs> and she keeps getting bored. <laughs> um, and that's exactly why I pivoted towards the rhino instead because the pangolin was just, it was just I, too I, much. I just imagined it to be way too much work. Yeah. Yeah. I was, it, I was thinking about how you could do the, the scales like while you were making it maybe with like a different stitch, but yeah, that is that is quite a project uh, in general, and it's good to. I really like your black rhino a lot because it's so simple. Like it's not, it's it's just very cleverly designed where it's not it's not too much to put together. Um, the fact the way that you made the head and the body put together, I just I say it in the video too about how much I appreciate because. <laughs> um, I, I tell you this all the time, how I, I just don't like sewing things together if I can avoid it. And and you totally took that to heart when it came to this rhino because your head was sewn on originally to the body and then you're like, no, 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 I can do this better. And then you did it again. And it was so cool. <laughs> like, I just really, really like your rhino yeah, pattern like, a lot. I definitely had my own frustration. Like when I initially had it as like a sewn head to the body, like it took me way longer to attach the head than it did to crochet all the pieces. <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. Some of some of the uh some of the crochet projects it's like oh boy, but it but you know, it can look so cute. And sometimes it's just the best way to design something is to have stuff sewn together. You know, my favorite part of your rhino pattern is the toes. I have never used that bean stitch before and uh, I love it. I just used it actually the other day. Show it up. Um, so I made, I've been working on some new dinosaurs for my, just just cause I wanna make some new dinosaurs. And this is a sneak peek for everybody else in the live stream as well. Um, but after I saw that bean stitch, I made a uh, an Ankylosaurus. I think that's the right name. Um, it's basically one, it's got like spikes on the back and spikes on the side. And I used the bean stitch for all these little points on the back. And dude, I love this stitch so much. I'm going to use it all the time. I think it is yeah, such it's a cool great. Stitch. Like I didn't want to, because I used the puff stitch and then mm -hmm. I just felt it was too big. Yeah, totally. So then I just did like a, like a blend between a, a puff stitch with just like a, just a regular increase. So did you, did you make up the bean stitch? I'm, I'm sure someone's come up with it already. Like, I'm sure it has like an alternative name. Um, oh my gosh, but that is an, I, as far as you know, an OG stitch. You made up the bean stitch and you named it the bean <laughs> stitch. What, 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 what gave you the idea for the name of the bean stitch? I um, love the well, name. It, it's for, it's for the toes, right? So then I thought, oh, a toe bean stitch. Oh but then, my gosh. <laughs> Dude, Philip, you're a genius. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> That's so cool. We should do a little mini tutorial for your bean stitch soon because I think it is an amazing stitch that um, people should use all the time. It is a great one. Um, it, it's very cleverly done. I, I just can't believe I've never like made anything like it. It's very cool. Thank you. And like, I learned so much from crocheting your sloth as well. Um, cause with the claws, like I had made a sloth before, but I made the claws very similarly to how, uh, 
like I did the rhino horns. I just did like a, a small little tube. Oh, right. And then, yeah, I tried to make, so originally with the claws, I tried to do three separate, um, like, uh, pieces that you then sew each of them on to the, to the tip of the claw individually. And it was just such a hassle. And oh, it, it took forever. Yeah, it took forever. And it was also just like, it just didn't look right. And then I tried to, um, to crochet the claws while I was making the arm to like, you know, cut down on sewing pieces together. And then that took me forever. I couldn't figure out anything there. Um, but I do a similar thing like this for uh, my stegosaurus pattern to sew the, the spines on the stegosaurus and it is so helpful. What I actually, I stole uh, an idea from, um, from uh, Andrea's uh, red panda here. She does this cool thing with her crochets where she um, like essentially sews the arms and legs together by just crocheting into both sides simultaneously. At the same time, yeah. yeah, and and after I did that on her pattern, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna totally use that on the sloth because that it just saved so much time. It was I just I love doing collaboration patterns so much because I learned every single time. I think that I'm not gonna learn more, but I always learn a new technique from from a different amigurumi artist. It's just so interesting how we all crochet differently. Yeah, and I recently, um, I crocheted um, like an Oddish, like the Pokemon Oddish, mm -hmm. but using uh, another artist's pattern. And like, she just did so many cool things with like the way that um, she made the legs. Like she used uh, the technique to turn a heel as you would in a sock. Oh, and, interesting. Okay. Yeah, like, so you get that like really perpendicular bend to uh, the foot going into the leg. Yeah. And yeah, I just find it so like cool that, you know, we, we all get very stuck in our ways. Um, mm -hmm. So like kind of branching out and trying other people's patterns, like there's so much that um, you can learn without staying in your little bubble. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so funny how you get like, I get just stuck in, in the same... Uh, doing the same things, even though I, I just didn't know, like, like for example, the magic loop method, I've been using a magic loop method that is just way more complicated than you did. And then you used uh, your magic loop method in, I think it was the, um, I think it was the, uh, be the bell bag pattern is where I first saw you use it. Right. And I was like, oh my God, this <laughs> this is like 20 times easier to do Magic Loop. <laughs> How did I not know about this? How has no one told me about this? And ever since then, I've been using that that easier Magic Loop method. Um, I actually have a tutorial that I've been working on with for like different Magic Loop methods and, and the benefits for each one because they each do have their own benefits and downfalls. But um, I just think it's really cool to to learn these new techniques from different artists a lot. I think it is very, very awesome. Let's see, where am I in the arm? The the one thing with the sloth arms that I am like a little bit, I don't know, I, I'm like, uh, part of me really likes that I did this and then part of me really doesn't is that I do certain parts of it where I do single crochet one and then move the stitch marker over to here, which right. I've never done in a pattern before but it just makes it so much easier to explain the pattern. Cause that's something that I end up getting stuck with too in my patterns is that like, it's sometimes I change what the design of the pattern is just simply because it's easier to explain it this way than it is, uh, then like it looks better if I put a decrease here, but it's easier to explain if I don't put the decrease there, you know? Right. And I find that, uh, that it, it just kind of hinders my designs a little bit. So in this pattern, I tried doing a different thing where I was like, okay, single crochet one, and this is the new end of your pattern. And part of me feels like I'm cheating, but part of me feels like, oh no, it just makes it look better. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, mean? cause I thought like when I was crocheting your sloth, I thought it was clever because um, crocheting always drifts mm -hmm. towards the right side. Yeah. So just by offsetting it by that one single crochet each row, yeah, it really, yeah, it, it helps fix it a lot. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, I was actually really surprised because, uh, 
Andrea's red panda pattern was um, her body, the body of her pattern has a lot of color changes in it. And I was like, when I was first looking at it, I thought, oh man, these color changes are gonna drift, no question. And then I didn't, I was like, wow, she really planned this out well so that they don't drift. I'm excited to talk to her about that because I think that's a really interesting um, how she figured that out. I think it's just the way she put her decreases and whatnot mm -hmm. fixed it up. Okay, so I'm gonna add the magnets in my arm now. Man, I love using mini, mini magnets for my crochet now. I use it for like every other pattern <laughs> that I do. <laughs> They're just so useful. And like, and I do, I, I just think it's so clever, like the way that you um, add little gimmicks to your crochet patterns. I like to add gimmicks because the, um, mostly because of the kits. Like I don't want, um, I mean, sometimes I don't really get many options, but every time I make a different crochet kit, I want it to be special so that it's not just like, just the yarn that you're getting. I like you to either be able to have another uh, additional thing involved or a lot of different colors of yarn because I want there to be a reason why you would want to purchase this kit outside right. of it just being right. like, you know, instead of just getting uh, a few balls of yarn for it so that it's not only reasonable for the price but also like, uh, you know, fun to get something special in the kit. And Yeah, because then it, it turns it into a toy so uh -huh. it's not just like a decoration piece. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that you have like a million crocheted things all over your house just like I do and after a while I get to the point where I'm like oh my god what am I going to do with this new crocheted thing or what am I going to do with that so I have to come up with more creative ideas of what I'm going to actually do with these crocheted things to give me the excuse to make it <laughs> um, yeah. it's been a shame that we haven't been able to do any markets exactly yeah and I have buckets off. buckets filled with crocheted things that I'm like man when I have a a sale, like a or a uh, a market thing. I'm gonna have so much stuff to sell. <laughs> um. So my partner and I, we always joke. We call my crochet projects. We we call them friends. Um. So <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> so he's always complaining, like just saying, like, oh, we have too many friends all around the house. There's friends on the coffee table. There's yeah. friends like on the <laughs> kitchen countertop. Um. And then, so I have a bunch of bins under my bed, and we just... You just keep all your friends under the bed? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny when you say like, oh, uh, we just, there's no more space for our friends underneath the bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's actually why um, I came up with that, with Stitched, my, my tabletop game with crochet, is because right. my girlfriend was, uh, we, I had a... Um, like a cubby where I was just keeping them all. And I just kept making them over and over. And I wasn't even sharing them on the internet. I was just making them because they were just really fun for me to make. I hadn't done a right. pattern for them or anything. And she was like, Lou, dude, you gotta figure something out here because we can't just keep making crocheted things. Like you can't just keep making them to put, it. there's no more room for them all. And so then I was like, okay, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with these guys. Uh, and I just stayed up late one night and, uh, made a game and I was so happy with that. I think I'm going to keep doing those kind of um, like like games with crocheted pieces because it's just such a, I just think it's so cool that you can make your own game pieces. Yeah. You know, 3D, 3D print your own pieces. This is the tough part right at the end there, crocheting these arms together, but oh, I forgot to stuff it. Never mind, gotta do it again. I hate doing that when I accidentally forget to stuff my stuff. Stuff my stuff. And then it gets to that point where you just can't. Yeah, you're like, oh no, <laughs> I can't stuff it now. Actually, I got a little stick for this. Vanessa says we should crochet a cat. <laughs> Divine Rose says that she has too many crochet friends in fear of her cats eating them. She could, or she can't have too many crocheted friends because her cats will eat them. Um, my cat, like sometimes I'll come home and he'll just be sitting on the couch and then he'll just, like, as when he gets up, I'll just find like a, a little crochet friend right underneath where he was sleeping. Yeah. I, I, I'm like, 
Uh, my mom's been trying to like collect a bunch of my crocheted stuff so that one day when I have kids, she can just give them to my kids. And I'm like, mom, there's no point to do that. I already, like, I'm going to have all those things <laughs> myself. <laughs> you don't need to collect them for him. It's kind of, you don't, you don't have any kids, do you? No. Yeah, I, I kind of like, we're, 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 um, what's the, it's a shame. It's a shame we don't have kids because, <laughs> like, we have so many children's toys. <laughs> oh, man. But, oh, I, I get it. And that's why, like, I'm always so happy when friends have kids because yeah. then I always have gifts that I can shower them with. Yeah, yeah. So many excuses. I just enjoy making toys. Like, it, it's kind of, it's just such a funny thing, funny art that we've, we've come to love. So what what do you think your um well first off what's your favorite animal? Um I do I do like leopards. leopards I just think great. they're just so like I, I don't know they're just like such sleek cool looking cats. They are. You were right. I love their tails so much. I like they're uh -huh. just big old <laughs> I just love like a big old fluffy tail. Yeah. I'm guessing it's probably so that they can balance themselves really, really well. Like, as a kid, like, whenever we would go to the zoo, like, I would run immediately to the snow leopards. Yeah. They're so cool. It would be so cool to see a snow leopard in real life, but I don't, I don't know if that is, that would be very, very difficult. <laughs> what about yourself? What's your, what's your favorite animal? I think... I don't know. I, I I go through different phases of what my favorite animals are. are. Um, I really like hummingbirds a lot. Uh, and I love lemurs. I'm a huge fan of lemurs. I just like primates in general. Because um, I, I got to study them a lot for for school. And I don't know. I just love them. I think lemurs are so cute because there's so many different kinds. They're all from one place just the idea of all this divergent evolution happening in one single island and there's right, like on madagascar yeah and there's like 60 different of these same exact creatures like what how how are there so many different ones and then also um that they're kind of, they're just like they're like cat monkeys <laughs> i guess all monkeys are kind of like cat monkeys but lemurs <laughs> especially are like cat monkeys because they are less evolved than higher apes in the sense that like their intelligence is not you know super duper big but i don't know they just like act like cats and monkeys put together i just love lemurs i think they're the, the cutest things in the world specifically um, the red ruffed lemur that's my favorite of the lemurs if you were to ever come to calgary we have a big lemur exhibit oh great i can't Do wait it's just like a giant enclosure and uh, i don't know how many but we have there's a lot of lemurs and um you actually guests can come right into the enclosure and uh the lemurs can just like just climb all around you above you oh my gosh that's so cool and sometimes like they'll just come right up to you and just like hang out by your feet oh my gosh that would be so cool i really would like to do that sunshine brings up a really good point um uh she says that uh have i ever thought about giving the toys to homeless shelters that have kids. That's a really, really, really good idea. I like that a lot. I think that I'll start doing that um, because I, I mean, I have so many of these little toys and because every time I do one of these patterns, I always have to do, you know, I make the one prototype, then then I make the, then I write the pattern and then I do it again. So I end up making like four or five different of the exact same patterns when I make one of them, so. That's a really good idea. Um, what? Okay, so your favorite animal. That was your favorite animal. What about, what's your like Patronus? If you were an animal, what oh. animal would you be? Um, I do, I have an affinity for, like I do like birds. I, I have an affinity for um, like crows. I just oh, love yeah. seeing them. And I, I love seeing, uh, so the other day I was, uh, I was walking home and I saw I saw nature in action. So I saw a crow drop a nut onto the, onto like a, onto a, a road. And then cars drove over it, crushed 
uh, crushed the nut, and then the crow just came and picked up what it wanted. Just, oh uh, my gosh, that's incredible! Right, like they're so smart, and I just, I just think they're so cool. They look so cool. Yeah, they do look really cool. Like, yeah, <laughs> they do look super cool. So that would be my Patronus, just like a big, giant crow. Wow, I think you're the only person I've ever asked what their Patronus is, and they said a crow. <laughs> I agree. Chirp a little says we need a crow or raven burb. I totally agree. I should totally make a burb that is a crow. Um, yeah, I agree. That is a really cool idea there. I like the idea of uh, whatever your Patronus being being able to fly, because um, I I want my Patronus to be a hummingbird, and I think it might be a hummingbird because I'm tiny and I'm I've got a very fast metabolism. Uh, and all I, all I drink is juice. So I think maybe a hummingbird. And I just like the idea of being able to dart around like that, you know? You get lots of hummingbirds where you are? Oh yeah, so many. Uh, we get to see them do their like little mating ritual in our backyard too, which is really fun. One hummingbird will just sit on top of a, of a twig. And then another hummingbird will go up really high and then just dive bomb and do like a, a, turn real really fast uh, really fast right before the ground i'm guessing to show like how daring he is or how fast he can go or something right right um it's really really fun to watch do you, you know like, get... i'm always so surprised whenever i see them like they're so small like i always think they're bumblebees yeah they are and they sound like bumblebees mm. yeah, get, um just... you ever seen a hummingbird's nest oh it's like minuscule like oh, you need like a magnifying glass it's crazy and I just learned the other day, I was watching a, um, a special on hummingbirds, and I learned that the baby hummingbirds make no noise. They're, they are completely quiet because they're so uh, fragile, and like if anybody finds where they're at, because the, the, um, the adult hummingbirds have to leave the nest so often to eat because their metabolism runs so quickly right. that they have to leave their... Um, they're young and tender for so long that their young have, have evolved to not make any noise at all, which is so interesting to me, but it makes sense. Oh, I forgot to move my stitch marker over. Okay. See, I gotta, gotta remember certain parts of this pattern. This is a really, I really like this pattern a lot though. My sloth. I, I, I think it might be one of my new favorites. I just wish I could figure out how to do the face a little the color changes in the face a little bit better so that the certain colors don't bleed through yeah i found um like i would just have to get another strand of yarn and just like crochet over mm -hmm. the little peeking colors oh interesting so you just crochet with the same color that you're crocheting with but like a secondary thread under that yeah so just to give it a little bit more oh, uh, that's a good idea i'm gonna try that bit. when i get to the face here that's a really good idea. I think my Patronus might also be a raccoon, though, because I do <laughs> stay up till, like, I was up till 5 a.m. the other night. Six, like, that's pretty normal to me, and I do eat a lot of garbage, so. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's a raccoon. Also, raccoons are just adorable. Do you guys get a lot of raccoons up there? So, um, it's a little, we get, we get some, like, more on the outskirts of the city. Mm-hmm. The people who live like a little closer to our uh, our uh, public parks, um, I I live inner city, so I don't get to see a lot of wildlife. Mm, okay, but like I, I have friends who like they they have deer that just visit them every morning. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, just like nature, just just all around you, um, but not not so much where I am in the urban urban center. You know, I saw a new nature doc coming out. Uh, it's actually out now. I think it's on Apple TV. I was watching um, Tiny Planet last night, which is also on Apple TV. It's it's a nature doc uh, narrated by Paul Rudd, which was it was pretty good. I think it was the idea was like because he's Ant Man or something, that, right? That he did like <laughs> a tiny stuff. But uh, during while I was watching that, I got an advertisement for something called. Um, what was it called? Like a new planet or an, um, the day, the, the year the earth, 
the the year the earth changed i think that's what it maybe it was called and it's about how um because of quarantine all all these animals have come out because the humans aren't going outside and we're not traveling as much so like um uh the skies are clearing up in certain places and stuff like that i thought it looked really interesting it's out now on apple tv and i know you were saying you're a big fan of nature docs so you might want to check it out and it's narrated by david attenborough so you know that's going to be entertaining <laughs> oh totally. instant classic yeah instant classic right away uh did you watch um what was the the one it was like david attenborough's like plea to the to the world on netflix um can't remember the name of it but it's a very very good man i should have looked that up right before this I can't remember the name. What, what's your favorite nature docs? Oh, um, like if I'm ever like lacking any sort of inspiration, like I will just throw on like a planet Earth or like mm -hmm. Blue Planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think <laughs> I've watched those like a couple hundred times. Yeah, <laughs> just like, the way that they're shot, it's just, it's insane. Like yeah. the hoops that they had to go through to get these insane yeah. vistas. Totally. There's a, there's a new one called Night on Oh Our Planet. Thank you, Jane. That's exactly the one that I was thinking about. Our Planet is the one that's on Netflix that is um really really good. Um uh there's one new one. I can't remember what it's on, but it's called Night on Earth and it's a very similar thing where you're like, "How the hell did they get these shots?" They have these new cameras that shoot in they shoot at nighttime, but it makes it look like it's daytime. Right, yeah, I remember watching a couple of the first episodes. Yeah, and it's Tom Hiddleston, I think, is the, is the, the person. The narrator? Yeah, the guy that does Loki is the right. narrator. It was really good. I, I, I enjoyed that one a lot. I, um, I'm always looking for who the next, because, you know, Admiral's, I think he's almost 100 years old. Right, like he's getting, he's getting up there. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't, every time he comes out with a new one, I'm like, wow, I can't believe he did another one. <laughs> um, another, another channel that I watch on YouTube is Animal Logic. Oh, yeah, you know I love Animal Logic. I just watched one, uh, before, before this. Oh, I watched the one on leeches just the other day. Oh, oh man. Was... Yeah, that one is, yeah. They are so cool. I reached out to them, actually, to do... Uh, giveaway for that that yeah your otter yeah and immediately they responded and were like I love this they're they're just very cool cool people and they obviously care a lot about the world so if you guys haven't checked out if you were looking for a new YouTube channel to check out go check out Animal Logic they are awesome awesome people awesome channel and uh, yeah and then the the host is an amazing artist as well she does really really good illustrations I didn't realize that was her illustrations did you know that um I I realized it once she she was advertising um, watches that had her art inside the watch whoa that's cool and then that's when it clicked I was like oh this is this is her drawing all of these like and like intense illustrations yeah very intense yeah it's very it's just impressive that I didn't realize that she was also the the illustrator for all of these as well. Did I mess this up? Where did I mess this up? One, two, three. I think I should push a decrease there. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I this the wool is sometimes hard to work with without a stitch marker. You know, normally I don't use a stitch marker at all. So and I didn't use one here, and I really should have. Because I lost track of where I was. <laughs> Are you with, do you use stitch markers a lot? Um, I, I just use like the one strand of yarn. Mm, yeah, um, to, as a stitch marker. Yeah, that, that definitely yeah. is like the easiest. Like if I'm making the larger pieces, like the head or the body, but like arms and legs, I usually just forego the, mm -hmm. the stitch marker. Same. I wish I did in this case, but I do the same. Oh yeah, um, so Danielle Cook, um, she just mentioned Bizarre Beasts on YouTube. So I've been watching that one as well. Oh, what is that one? So it's hosted by Hank Green, who's like a oh, really, yeah. really big Love science Hank YouTuber. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, it's just like finding like very, very odd animals, like ones that you don't normally hear about. Oh, I'm going to check them out right now. I'm actually going to... And then every month they release uh, a cool pin of that animal. What if my... 
a cool pin that you can like purchase for the animal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a very limited edition pin. Like you can only order it in like a span of two days. Bizarre beasts. I'm going to subscribe right now. Those are my favorite YouTube channels to watch. I also really like, um, there's a channel called, uh, um, oh man, what's the name of it? Um, Tear, Tear Zoo. You ever watch Tear Zoo? No. He's a, he, he pretends that, or like, he talks about the planet as if they were, um, as if, uh, you ever heard of the subreddit outside, our outside? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, they pretend like the war, like life is a game and, and he pretends that animals are like, like different builds of, of characters you could play in a video game. So he's like, okay, what's the best build for, uh, for fish? And he, and he ranks them on in like a tier like a tier would be a catfish yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so good i really really like it a lot it's very funny and you learn a lot about um about the specifics of evolution on of these different animals i highly suggest it also the guy is just a really nice human being um <laughs> which is always nice to know let's see where are we at i think i'm on my last stitch for my second arm now um, Chirp Little just, uh, she brought up, uh, what house, like, which oh, Harry Potter Oh, Hufflepuff represent, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, That's which funny. one would you... Oh, I'm a, I am a hardcore Slytherin. It's, it's just a fact of, of my personality. I am a Slytherin. And you know what, we're not all evil. So, <laughs> we're not all evil. We have a couple bad, bad apples, no question, but... We're not all evil. What about you? Um, I, I always I was waffled between Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. Mm. Yeah. Because after watching um, uh, the um, what, what are they called again? The supernatural beasts? Oh, what are they called? Oh, fanta uh, 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 fantastical. Fantastic beasts, or yes. and where to find them? Yes. Yeah, that's it. Um, like. I like that's the job that I would want. Just like oh yeah, totally re researching and like helping and caring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the the reason I'm a Slytherin is it's that that determination. I'm just like I'm always when I come up with an idea to do something, I'm very determined to make it happen. Uh, period. <laughs> like I will make it. I will make it happen one way or another. Um, and I'm also pretty competitive, especially like <laughs> yesterday I was playing, you ever play the game Coup? Yes. Oh man, I love that game. And my Slytherin comes out very hard in that game. Just, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of competition, uh, when it comes to games. I try to keep it out of my regular, regular life as much as I can, but you know. Oh, when you're playing games, it's like... It's, yeah, I get to let my real, my animal Slytherin instincts out. Lie my way to the top. <laughs> you never, Rebecca has never watched Harry Potter? What are you, what are you doing? Go watch Harry <laughs> Potter. It's a great, like, yeah, great books, great series. Whoa. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them are, it's okay. Yeah, they're not great. Yeah, they're, they're they're worth watching, but yeah, there's better. There's definitely better movies out there too. I don't know. It's uh, what's J.K. Rowling's. Uh, I feel like she's trying to grasp at like her, like she's like, I was. What, what's the what's the, what am I trying to say here? Like, she peaked and she knows she peaked, and now she's, she's trying to recapture. Yeah, it. she's trying to recapture it again, and it's just like, girl, you, you're not gonna. Dip, you can't. I'm sorry. You did. You did an amazing job. And you should just be happy with. Yeah, what be you happy. Did. Yeah, and stop saying terrible things. She. I guess she's been just saying really bad anti-trans things. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been paying attention to it that much because I just don't want to. I just don't want to give her any attention. I'm just like, all right, I like your books. You did a good job on Harry Potter. I'm not gonna. I. Yeah. Anyhow. Right, but it, it's like caused a lot of people like 
strife. Like they really, really like. Yeah, especially Harry people Potter. in the trans community because they're like yeah. they they identified so well, specifically with their sexual orientation towards Harry Potter, and then now it's like, oh, damn, what do I what do I do about this? Because supporting this is directly supporting someone that is believes in complete different ideals than I do and I feel and the same way stories are there's there's so much about the underdog yeah absolutely like and there's and there's so much about like about being born a specific way and stuff right. you know it's it's just I don't know I don't know it's weird I have the same kind of inner dilemma with um uh Ender's game and Orson Scott card oh yeah because he is like very like uh homophobic but damn is that a good book <laughs> like edger's game is a really really good book but the author is a terrible person period like that's that's where i'm at and it kind of gives me a it, i don't know it gives me this weird feel where i'm like shoot i like the artist but i mean i like the art but i hate the artist what how do i how do I deal with this internally? I know, and like lately for me, because um, in school I, I also teach a dance class and sometimes the kids really, really want to listen or to dance to like Kanye West or- Oh my like, gosh, yeah, Rainbow. yeah. And you're like, but also Kanye West sucks. <laughs> yeah, like he's not a great role model No, he's all. a terrible, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. He is like one, one of the worst role models probably. That guy is, I mean, he's just, I feel bad for him a lot of times, too. It's just, he's wild. The guy has gone, jumped down a few too many rabbit holes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see. Where are you at? Uh, I'm just, I just finished the head, so I'm working on the rest of the body. Oh, man, you're flying. You did all the arms and legs already, too? Um, I did, I did just one of the front leg and then one of the back leg oh, okay um i i'm finding it like very difficult to keep track of where i am and talking at the same time oh yeah it is definitely something that is um like comes with practice it's it, that's why use a stitch marker if you can i'm about to to use one once i figure out where the hell i'm at in my pattern <laughs> When like, I started the head, I, I think I got like six or seven rows in, and then I just like had to take out a whole bunch. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be tough. I want to start doing, um, I used to do these live streams where I would do, um, I called them Monster Mondays. I don't know what to call them now because I don't think I'm going to do them on Mondays. But it's basically like improvised crochet where I draw a picture and then I crochet whatever that picture is live on stream so I have to like figure out how I'm gonna make this like live it is very right. very difficult um, but it's very rewarding because you have to come up with brand new ideas for crochet on the spot it, right. it inspires a lot of creativity um, one thing that I wanted to play around with like on Instagram was uh, like have it like a choose your own adventure kind of thing where I would just do sort of there and say like I'm going to work on the arms next. What kind of arms should I do? Like what color, yep. what shape? And then just like putting together like whatever Frankenstein creature. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, one thing I really want to add to the, to the club crochet website is a build your own patterns, um, like application on the site. I'm working with my, uh, friend who helps design stuff on this area right now on it. But basically it'd be like all the past patterns, you know, there's different parts where it's like, okay, we've got sloth arms, we've got rhino legs, we've got this kind of hat or this kind of head or whatever. And so you could right. go into it and say, okay, I want to use this body, I want to use this head, and then you'll hit go and it'll spit out a pattern using those different different um, sections as the for the pattern. Uh, I'm really, really excited about it. But it's a very similar thing where it's like, okay, I want to put together the weirdest creature possible <laughs> you know mm -hmm. yeah the, and like give it that like audience participation too yeah which i think would be really cool yeah i was actually thinking of a very similar thing on instagram well kind of similar of a choose your own adventure where it's a um it's a character and he's he's on an adventure and people get to decide okay does he go like which way does he go in the fork in the road and based on the way he goes you know like a D, &D campaign 
based right. on the way he goes, he runs into a different character, and because of that character, oh, he's collected this item, and now, you know, okay, now where does he go, everybody? And then we just keep making a story together. Uh, but I agree. I think I think audience participation is really fun. Or, like, it would be cool, too, like, if, say, like, both of us were doing it, and then we take the same prompts and then see what we come up with. Oh, whoa, dude, that'd be cool. Like, we should do that. Yeah, and see, like, how different, uh -huh. like, our ideas Like, how were. do we inter interpret someone saying, oh, I want a, a wiggly arm or something? And it's like, okay, yeah. that's, a, oh, I love that idea. Yes, I would totally do this with you <laughs> if you want to. That's such a cool idea. Aquatic Luna, that's a great idea for the name. Suspicious Species Sundays. <laughs> I love, I love it. it. So you have a cat. Yes. What's your cat's name? Uh, his name is Aji, A-J-I. Oh, you're so good with names. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so what's funny is uh, um, when we spoke yesterday, um, the first trip that my partner and I took to San Fran, um, we stayed in an Airbnb. And it was, it was cheaper than a lot of Airbnbs that were like right in the middle of San Fran. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason why it was cheaper was because we had to take care of the owner's cats. Oh, <laughs> that's and really interesting. Like to me, that was like a bonus. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, and then the cat was just so friendly. Um, like the second we like opened the door, like that cat was like up in our faces, just like. Oh, I love it being suit like being such a cute just a cute little friend um and that cat's name was Aji so we figured if we were to ever get a cat we would choose the name Aji that's great that's a great name Aji I love that so you you just have the one cat then yeah just the one you think you'll get another um, one we want to but my cat is <laughs> he's very selfish I don't think I don't think he would accept another cat in the home. Mm. That's what Jimbo's very like. We we say he's an attention whore all the time. Like he just he he demands anybody's attention that's in the room. And we have another cat, Phoebe, who is like the exact opposite. She she is very selective with who she wants to give the attention to. It's kind of nice having both, but I feel bad for Phoebe sometimes because Jimbo's so attentiony. <laughs> I just wish. I wish we had just a bigger home. Like our our two bedroom apartment is just it's just so tiny. Yeah, it's the same for us. Like I I live in a seven hundred square foot apartment. Like it's itty bitty. Yeah, it's the it's what comes with living in the middle of a city, I guess. It's just too expensive for us to move anywhere else here in San Francisco, you know. But whatever, we'll figure it out. How long have you been there for? Have you have you lived in Calgary all your life? Yeah, so born born and raised. So my parents came here in the '80s, and then they had me, and I've just been yeah been here ever since. Been cruising ever since. You know, it's funny. The other day when we were on our uh, when we were on our little call, I I always forget you're in Canada, and then and then I heard your uh, your partner say. Um, uh, say A in the background, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that's right. They're in, they, they're from Canada." <laughs> um, so right now, I'm looking out the window, and you can tell it's Canada because it's almost May, and we just had a huge dump of snow. Oh, whoa, snow! That's awesome. It's I... it's wild. I don't know. I I don't know how much longer I can take all this like cold weather. That's funny. I haven't. I've seen it snowing. I think like one time in my entire life. That's I just never see it snowing ever. But but to be fair, today, middle of May, it is it is pouring rain outside. So one or the other. It's it's either yeah. rain or snow. Rain or snow. What what time like does like is uh is summer does summer get like really hot or does it like really nice? It or? does. Um so uh, it, it, it doesn't last very long, but July and August are definitely like very, very warm. Mm, okay. Um, probably like an average day for Californians, but um, to us, it's quite warm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, here in San Francisco, you know, it's always pretty cold. So I, I hear that. Let's see. 
know. It's hard. You know what's really difficult? Uh, talking the whole time and also reading chat and also crocheting <laughs> and also controlling the stream. <laughs> yeah, this of... is like a wild, um, like multitasking activity that I, yeah. I, I'm just never that prepared for. Yeah, it, it, it definitely also gets... Um, uh, every time I'm, I'm done with my streams, I get, uh, like, they're just so much fun that that I don't feel the time pass at all. And I look at the clock and I'm like, oh my god, it's four? Okay, I gotta go, guys. I'm sorry. But then, uh, but then right when I'm done, I'm like, I, I am so zapped of energy. Because I just, like, spent all my, my brain power doing all these things at once. And, it is tiring, right? Like, uh-huh. It's, it's yeah, but it's fun. Like it's really fun, tiring. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y'all should move to Arkansas. You can get you can experience all the seasons in one week. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that seems like a lot. <laughs> um, this stream is pretty fun because like uh, during our calls, I feel like I have to kind of withhold a lot. So it's nice being able to like just kind of let loose and just yeah. Know, talk. Yeah. yeah totally sometimes you get to like into the zone and you realize afterwards like oh that's right i was supposed to keep that a secret like that like this dinosaur i just showed i was like i kind of wanted to keep this a secret but i didn't now because <laughs> i just i get to the zone it's fun i want to start trying to stream games but i'm kind of nervous about it too because you play you play a lot of video games right I do, um, but it's like another thing to have a bunch of people watching you yeah. as you're playing. Yeah, totally. I saw like, you. I, yeah, you've been playing a lot of. Um, uh, you were playing a lot of. Oh, what was it called? The one that was. Um, it was about uh, like, like Greek gods. Hades. Hades. Yeah. yeah. That. Um, it, it's it's one of those roguelike games where. You know, you die and then you just Love have to kind game. of start all over. Mm -hmm. But they've designed it in a way where, um, like, you dying every time is part, like, it's woven into the story itself. Oh, that's so cool. Like, what a unique, clever way to make a roguelike more, um, like, linear. And just, like, the gameplay, too. Like, it was just... Uh, it, it's one of those things, like, I would start it at, like, 6 p.m. And then I look at my clock and it's four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, I, I keep seeing you play it and it makes me want to play it more. But then I keep thinking, no, you've got enough games, Lou. You got to play your Super <laughs> Smash Brothers. <laughs> That's the one I'm obsessed with. Play and, really like, another much. thing with streaming, too, is, like, I, I, I play a lot of games, but I don't think I'm very good. So... <laughs> To have people just watch me fail over and over and over again. I get really, uh, yeah, especially, it depends on the, the game, but like Super Smash Brothers, I don't know if I want to live stream myself playing that because I get really competitive in it because I let my full Slytherin out. Right. And <laughs> I don't know if I want people to see that side of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? When, when Splatoon 2 came out and oh. I was playing that for like a month straight. Um, like my it. partner just like mentioned, like, like I've never been more violent. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Or, like the I'm words that came out of my mouth were just so awful. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes it's really nice to let that out. You know, it's really, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the safest way to let those kind of like that frustration out <laughs> is yeah. in a video game where no one really is getting hurt. <laughs> right, right. Sometimes you just need to get that out. I, I, I always think anger is like the, it's the most useless uh, emotion that humans have, at least at, at our day and age, like anger is pointless. Like there's no real reason to get angry, but regardless, it's still there. It's still in me. Like it, things oh, yeah. still make me upset and I need to let that frustration out in some way or another. So video games are a great way to let that out for me. Um, Melville just mentioned that Pokemon Snap is coming out in a few days. Oh my god, I am so excited. Yeah, April I've already 30th. got it pre-ordered. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm stoked. I am so excited about that. That is going to be great. It's going to be great to see, like, t 
to, to sign on to Pokemon Snap and see that you're already signed on to Pokemon <laughs> Snap. And go, okay, great. <laughs> just the way that like people can edit their photos in game now. Like mm -hmm. I'm just so, I'm always so surprised at like how creative people are. Yeah. Oh, you know what you should do? Cause you've been crushing a lot of really cool Pokemon. You should do, uh, you should try to get a really good Pokemon Snap image and then recreate it with a crocheted Pokemon that you've made. Oh yeah, and I have like the whole like background made out of like felt or something. Yeah, that would be so cool. That would be really, really cool. Coffee and crochet anger is only good for self-defense now. Yeah, and I don't really ever need to deal with that. Like, <laughs> the only time I need to deal with anger and self-defense is in, is in uh, Super Smash Brothers when I'm getting my butt handed to me. <laughs> Um, speaking of like inspirations, like how, how does it hit you? Like, are you, are you out of inspiration? I, inspiration watch, like, specific hits, media. Yeah. I, the inspiration hits me the most, um, late, late at night when I'm trying to go to sleep. That's when, that's when inspiration hits me the most. I have this, um, this internal rule where when my creative muse starts talking to me, that's, that's like basically what I say is when I'm inspired. When she starts talking to me, I gotta listen. I listen to it right away. And it's the, she always talks in the worst timings when I'm like in the middle of driving home or I'm in the middle of trying to go to sleep because I have to do a lot of things tomorrow. Like uh, a great, great example is the other night I was um, trying to go to bed and I've been trying to work on a video game with some friends of mine for a while, um, but we've been having a really hard time just with time management, both all of us trying to like build a video game while we're all working another job. And then simultaneous for me, like while I'm trying to, you know, start a business. Right. And uh, so I've been trying to think about like, oh, how can I make this video game a little bit um, easier to design for my part by making like the, the art a little bit easier? Cause it's all gonna be stop motion crochet. And so uh, I had an idea for a, for a like a, a scrolling shooter game where it's like you know like your little spaceship shooting right. and in the middle of the night I was like okay I got this idea and I couldn't sleep I was just up I was up till 6 a.m. on Friday well Saturday morning 6 a.m. laying in bed for four hours just thinking about this game over and over and I knew that I just couldn't let it go like I, I had to just keep because I'm not gonna get up and go out and write it down. I could have, I should have probably gotten up and wrote it down, but instead I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go through all the details right now in my brain <laughs> and figure out everything. So basically what I'm saying is my inspiration comes in the middle of the night for the most ridiculous things that are, um, that have nothing to do with what I'm working on at the time. It's really hard for me to like get creatively inspired for a very specific thing because my mind goes, what? here's a, there's a great, great quote from uh, Lost that I was just watching, which was, um, uh, he, uh, Locke from Lost was saying something about how um, he, he, uh, he found his purpose. And someone said like, okay, well, how'd you, how'd you do that? How'd you find your pur purpose? And he said, well, the same way that anything that's lost gets found, I stopped looking. And oh. I think that's the best, uh, for me, that's my best way to get inspiration. Don't think about what you're trying to get inspired about too much because if you're too close to it, you're going to start to get inspired about something completely different because your brain's going, it, it's like, it's you're, sometimes my brain's like a little kid that's like, no, I don't want to think about that. I want to think about something different. So if I start thinking about something different, then maybe my brain will think about the thing that I was originally trying for it to think about. I'll trick it into being inspired for something else. Right. Um, yeah, how about yourself? How does your, how uh, does inspiration work for you? Uh, uh, very similar to you. It's like, it's just one of those things that just like sort of hits me. Um, like I don't, I don't really, I don't have like a, a month long plan of what I'm gonna be crocheting, um, like that specific moment, um, but like, and it's kind of bad because I do most things very last minute. Same, yep. So yeah, like I'll just come up with an idea and uh, like something will hit me and then uh, I'll, I'll try to crochet it within like a couple days, do a pattern and everything for it. I 
uh, one of my biggest character flaws is like definitely a lack of planning and forethought. Mm -hmm. D ditto, dude. Absolutely the same thing. And and I've really been trying to get like ahead of schedule on my patterns and stuff. Like I know what pattern I'm coming out with next month. I know what pattern I'm coming out with the next the month after that. But be but when I do that, I start to make other patterns because I've got like. I don't know. I, I do the same thing, and, and then I and then I want to come out with something like right away. I want to, like, my inspirations now. So now I want to come out with it because I'm working on it right now. But really, we should save it up, and we should be like, okay, let's plan this out. Like, how is this going to be the most successful pattern that I can come out with? You know, like where? I don't know. I totally feel what you're saying though. It when inspiration hits, it's hard to like bottle it. It's hard to like come up with what you're doing and do it right and then bottle it and say like, okay, I'm gonna release this later. But I think uh, having a couple of those bottles put aside saves you for when inspiration isn't hitting you at all. Right. Cause and I did, it was, it was a couple of weeks ago where I did hit sort of like a, uh, like a writer's block. Totally, for, same, yeah. For and I just, I couldn't think of anything. Mm -hmm. um, so like my, my stallus is always to just like hop into a video game mm -hmm. and then, yeah. And then just whatever, like it's usually like an animal crossing or something. Um, and like, I'll just be inspired by just, just relaxing from a video game. Yeah. Same, same. I really like, um, I've been playing uh, hollow Knight recently. Oh, hollow Knight is awesome. It's, oh my God, it's the coolest game ever. So I'm replaying it now. And that game is so inspiring. Just. The, I just get so inspired. I get really inspired by lore a lot. So like yeah. just things where where stuff has a story to it. I really um, I really get inspired by that a lot. Uh, so I've been getting a lot of inspiration from Hollow Knight recently. It makes me did really you, want to make bugs. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever make it to the end of Hollow Knight? Like, finished, no, that's, like, that's actually why I'm replaying it. I did get to the end. I have this problem with video games where... I don't want them to end. I do it with TV shows too, where I like I'll stop before the last episode because I don't want it to be over. And I did right. that with Hollow Knight, where I didn't fight the last boss because I didn't want it to be over. And now I'm restarting, and I'm like, okay, well now I got to restart it from the beginning because I haven't played it in a year. I don't know how to play it, and I'm not ready to fight a boss. So now I'm restarting the whole thing, and now I'm I'm going to beat the boss this time because I want to get ready for they're making another one silk yeah, song yeah the silk song yeah yeah so I want to be prepped for that cuz I'm pretty sure it's going to be released uh, cuz E3 is happening in June and I think right. that silk song's going to be like hey check out silk song it's coming out right now that's what I'm I'm baking on I'm really hoping I, they that's do what that. I'm hoping for too yeah <laughs> it's just been like the news on it has just been so scant yeah and it's like oh just give me that game already. I know you guys have it. I know it's ready to rock and roll. You guys had it almost ready to rock and roll two years ago. It's ready. That and like Breath of the Wild 2. Are you kidding me, guys? Show me something for Breath of the Wild 2 already. I want it. Oh, but speaking of Breath of the Wild, like I was the same way, like the way that I, that you were with Hollow Knight. I just, I left Ganon and I just never did it. I never beat him. Wait, you still have never beat Ganon? No, so then um, a couple <laughs> months ago, I went back and then I just, I tried to do it, but then I just forgot how the game worked. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, dang, now what? Do I have to replay the entire game? Right, so, and like, even that just sounds like such a daunting task. Oh yeah, especially Breath of the Wild. Like, oh my gosh, what a, what a monster of a game. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, that, that game is incredible. I, how, I don't know how they're going to one-up it. I'm very excited to find out, though. I hope you get to play a Zelda. Me too. Did you ever play um, Age of Calamity? I played some of it. I just didn't really like the, that kind of gameplay. It just kind of got very, like... Pretty mindless. Like, yeah, maybe. exactly. It was just like... I just keep pressing the same button over and over. It didn't feel like there was... It felt like there wasn't very much of a challenge slash I would just lose out of nowhere you know I I did like the the novelty of being able to play as all these different mm -hmm. characters 
Yeah, especially, um, what was the girl's name? Uh, um, the ninja girl. Um, uh, Impa. Impa, yeah, I really liked playing as Impa. And I never got to the point where I could play as, a uh, as, like, Daruk or anything, but that seems really cool. Yeah, and my favorite character is Rivali. Oh, I love Rivali. Like That's funny. I could totally see. I I I think I could have guessed that your favorite character would be Rivali. Yeah, I just I I just love I love you love bird. birds. Yeah, <laughs> you just you just love birds. <laughs> and Rivali is really cool. Like he's such a jerk, uh, but I don't know. For some reason, I I do like that in a character. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I definitely get that. I don't care for Mim Mifa very much. She was very boring to me as a character. Yeah, just like a very nice, nice character. Yeah, and you're just like, okay, what are you here for? <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> I'm excited to play um, uh, the Skyward Sword, though. Yeah, I never got to play it on the Same. Wii, so it'll be cool to see it for the first time. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that I'm going to enjoy it like that much, but just having a Zelda game that I've never played before available would be cool. I mean, I yeah, after Breath of the Wild, like that's clearly the best. <laughs> it's the best Zelda game to me. Do you, so like I remember way, way back when, when I discovered you for the first time, um, you made like those little like, like bean characters. Oh yeah, pod people. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, do you ever revisit those patterns anymore? I do. I revisit some of them. I'm revisiting all the Zelda patterns this year uh, as like, just so I can redo them. Um, I've been working on a color chart, like a brand new color chart for how to read color changes because those patterns specifically pretty much are all about color changes. It's all just single crochets around and around, but you do a lot of color changes in the pattern. So I've been really trying to um, come up with a better way to both explain color changes and actually do color changes. Right. And um, this year I'm trying to, I'm going to just revisit some old ones, like the Zelda ones. But then I'm also going to, uh, I really want to come out with a full tutorial teaching how to make your own pod people of any kind. So here's where you put the face, here's how I do certain kinds of hair, and this is how I do arms. Um, as like a an actual book, right? <clears throat> because I I really want to just start doing more full fledged books for for patterns instead of doing individual patterns. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm going to keep doing individual patterns, but I just think there's more. Uh, it it's just more fun to do like a full big project like that. But just like you, it I get really impatient where I finish it and I want it out. I want it out, but I gotta wait. Um, um will you will you publish? like hard copy books? Uh, yeah, I, I'm working with my mom right now. To She's she's trying to, help, uh, she really wants something to do in retirement. And so one of the things that she's been trying to do is learning how to use um, the program that I use to design my patterns. And right. so I think it'll help me out. It'll help both of us out a lot. First off, it's just a fun idea to publish a book with my mom, uh, but then to do like physical copies of that like how cool i just i just think i'm really excited about it um and but i i, I think i want to start getting my books out on amazon because i know you know about this people are starting to steal our patterns and they're putting it up on amazon as their own freaking books yeah, it's it's a headache all of my animal crossing patterns um, are they still up there like five or six books that like just ripped my patterns just straight off my website yep same, same. They didn't even like do, they, they took all my dinosaur patterns and they just like published them in a book as if they made them. And yeah. I don't know who to talk to about it. I, I reached out to a lawyer about it and then got like, had to send a cease and desist. And they did take them down. Did they take yours down? Like the books that stole your patterns? They took, they took one of them down, but there's still quite a bit. And Amazon just won't do anything about it. That's so frustrating. That's why I'm thinking the best comp the best way to fight it is to do my own. Right. And then and then that way I can be like, look, they stole my book that's already for sale on your website. So you know it's they stole it. 
Right. That's, I mean, that's like the, the, that's what I've been trying to think of to combat it, but it is so frustrating. Cause it's like, I can't keep up with searching my patterns on, on Amazon all the time. It's just so like, I already have enough things. <laughs> like I can't do yeah. that. Yeah. And, and then, and then not knowing how to fight it. Like, how do I, how do I fight that? Yeah. Coffee and, and crochet saying what these horrible people, I, it, it is, I think it. And I also think that it's um, it's people that are using certain pseudonyms, so that yeah. they're not even so like they're not even actual people. Yeah. So that when when they do get caught doing it, they're not going to get in any trouble. It's so frustrating. We should do a we should do like a I want to do like a video that comes out that that explains the 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 troubles that all of our because. This is not just happening to us two. Like that dinosaur book, I actually have it right here. Where is it? It doesn't sell anymore. I bought it myself because I was like, I wanted to, I wanted to own it so that I could show it and be like, look at this book. Because it was, they weren't selling it for that much on Amazon. Right. Um, but they literally just copied and pasted my pattern from, from the site, and they didn't even like I put in. Um, little numbers before the rounds so that people can quickly go to uh, jump to where it was in the video tutorial. And they right. just kept those numbers as if the video tutorial was, so they didn't even proofread it at all. They just copied and pasted it. Cause yeah. And like on my blog too, like I would write like a little blurb about like something very personal, like w what this pattern meant to me. And they just copied and pasted that too. Oh, so annoying. Yeah. It's like a new, it's like a new, um, um, what's that word? Uh, like scam. Yeah. And, and it's just, I think what, what kills me the most, like, it doesn't even bother me that much that they like stole my patterns. It's just that those patterns were free and they're charging people it, money for yep, them. Exactly. It's like, oh yeah, that's so frustrating. Like that's the reason I came out with this pattern was because I wanted to, offer something for free for everybody or or at the very least like the minimum thing they could have done if they were going to steal your pattern is they could have given you a shout out in the book they could have said right. like this pattern's from this person and that's i mean it's still messed up and i would also be still really upset that they stole my pattern but that's like minimum that you could do to like be a at least a little bit of a better person yeah, I don't know. It it is very frustrating and a very unique. Um, I'm wondering how how far uh, this problem goes throughout the yarn community. Like, are there knitting patterns like books that are people are doing the exact same thing with knitters? There um, must be because I, I I know that there are like Facebook groups that exist where one person will buy a pattern and then just like share it with everyone in the group. Yeah. Which that's messed up, by the way. If you are part of a group where people are just like stealing patterns like that, you really should support your artists because, like, look at, <clears throat> look at, uh, um, uh, like Sir Pearl Gray and I. We both work other jobs and we and we do all these patterns and stuff. We don't make a lot of money off of these things. So, people stealing from us. It's not like they're stealing from a corporation or something. They're stealing from like individual artists that are already not making a lot of money so it's just really crummy it's just a really yeah. crummy business model just if you're oh. if you are um if you're a fan of art in general whatever art you're a fan of whether it be crochet or painting or whatever support that art support your artists that you like um i, I mean that should go without saying but let's say it anyhow yeah, and especially like during like pandemic times too, like it's even just supporting like local businesses around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, support local. We're already buying so much from Amazon and and Apple and whatever. These, these corporations are just getting bigger and bigger and scarier and scarier. I finally finished my arms. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> At least I don't have to do horns now too okay i did find um like after after crocheting the claws i spent so much time crocheting the claw onto the arms <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, it, it can be. Yeah, it can be a little tricky. You you do a lot of your sewing together when things are already um, sewn together too. That's something I noticed about um, Lemon Yarn Creations. You both you both sew things on after things are already sewn closed, and uh, I don't do that. I, I I usually try to sew things on when like while the thing's open, so I have something to knot it up to on the inside. And I think there's a benefit to both, like depending on what you're sewing on. So I've right. been trying to switch my thing up. Like these these arms are all gonna get sewn on after I sew this guy closed, which normally I wouldn't do. But after doing your guys' patterns and doing that, I found, yeah, that's kinda makes things a little bit easier. But the claws, that is not easier. I find it's a lot easier to sew the claws on while you're crocheting it. Um, have you ever used, uh, like just needles to pin your pieces together before you sew? You, I used to try doing that and then I just, I don't because I just don't, I don't like to use the time to do it. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. I'm like just I just jump right into it. Yeah. But so many people keep like, whenever, whenever people watch my videos, they're like, oh, why don't you just pin it? Um, so then when I would give it a try, I just get so impatient. Exactly. Yeah. Same. I just like, I don't. I don't know. And and there's also some kind of like uh, improv improvisation that comes with sewing your pieces together where it's there's it's kind of like there's not really an exact science. It's it's really really hard to explain. Okay, sew something on between these stitches and these stitches. Like that's really hard to explain in a pattern. It's so specific, yeah. Yeah, and it, and it depends like how did you crochet it, you know? Like how did you use a yarn under or yarn over? Because you use yarn unders, right? right? So your patterns get sewn on, like your horns of your rhino get sewn on just a stitch over probably than I do. And that's just the way, that's that's just the way it goes. Okay, I need to, let's see. I wanna crochet around the white yarn while I'm crocheting around the black yarn so that I can try to hide the color change. Right, that's what uh you're saying? So Icy Reaper um, mentioned that uh, people on Etsy selling crochet made from R patterns. How do you feel about that? I personally am fine with that because I can't keep up with it. Like I couldn't, I can't, if, if I were to sell my crocheted things online, I could sell like two of them. And then I don't have the time to make like 15 dinosaurs in a week if I were to sell that many dinosaurs. And I also, it helps encourage like people to purchase my patterns. But my only qualm with that is if you do that, you have to give credit to me in the in the description of the post. Like you have to give credit on Etsy, like this pattern is from this maker. And also if you are crocheting, um, if you are crocheting something that that someone else has made ask for their permission first don't just like do it because that's messed up like, right and that's sort of my stance on it too like I'll, I'll get lots of emails from people asking if it's okay to sell stuff made for my patterns and I said yeah I guess so like as long as you credit me as long as you're the one that paid for the pattern yeah yeah right. like I I get it I did that too when I was when I was first learning how to crochet, like I made a lot of other people's stuff and then I sold it at a fair. Um, I didn't, I never sold them online, but like, like I get it, you know, especially when you're like, it's a great way to, to make money when you're young and don't have a, another job. Like I paid my way through, um, through college by crocheting. I mean, you know, somewhat. <laughs> I didn't pay my way all the way through college with crocheting, but I did a little bit, so I get it. And at the end of the day, too, like they are the ones who made mm -hmm. the the product, so I'm I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah. I I just think it's a it's a case by case basis. Depends on the artist and in the piece to a degree the piece, but yeah. Um, but that's a good question. I need to do, I need to make that more obvious that you can do my, because I get that question a lot, like, hey, can I sell my patterns with your, or can I sell something made with your patterns? I just need to make it more obvious that that is okay. Just give credit. Um, coming from like a teacher's perspective though, like I do, one thing I do like about people 
um, you know, getting getting into the getting to the mode of creating to sell is eventually they'll they'll learn their own techniques from mm -hmm. you know borrowing from different artists. Yeah, totally, and they'll and they'll make their own patterns. Right, and that. then they'll get to a point where they're confident enough to design their own patterns. Yeah, yeah. I want to um I want to start offering on the website uh, a section where people can list things that they've made like that they're selling on Etsy using uh, club crochet patterns to give another marketplace for people to find stuff but I don't know how effective it's going to be so I haven't been putting too much effort into that yet. Right. but I just think that'd be a cool little offer on the website I don't know I just really like adding new features to the website as much as I can it's a fun little passion project for me and my friend uh yeah. Do you have do you have a pattern that like definitively defines your sort of style? My style? Um I mean like a favorite I... pattern where like if someone were to ask like, "Oh, uh, or someone were to see it, they would say, be "Oh, like, that's, oh that's... that's definitely like a, that's a Louis pattern." Yeah, I think probably um I I think probably the dinosaurs or the um or the goblins. The goblins are really like a, especially like the the little miniature goblins where I'm using the bobble stitches for arms. Cause that, I right. think that is something that is very, um, uh, that's very much my style is using bobble stitches as arms and legs in my patterns. I do that a lot. Right. Um, but that is a good question because no question, I definitely have a style and so do you. Like it's very obvious to me when when I like this is so your style to me. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just so you you. It's very Philip. Especially like like your um like Gulliver. It's so I I don't know, it looks like Gulliver, but it's also clearly Sir Pearl Grey's creation. Yeah, like I really I, I have a like my aesthetic is like really big head, small body. Mhm. Mm um, but like detailed, but still very like maintaining that sort of cute look to it. Yeah. Also for me, half color changes. I, I like using half color changes a lot. So, if, but I don't think people like doing half my, the half color changes from <laughs> me. Um, Jane, Jane saying distracted from three out of four sellers on Etsy that are selling my Triceratops don't credit me. Yeah. And it's like, what am I supposed to do? I go on Etsy and reach out to every single one. I, I don't have the energy to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. At, like at some point, like for me too, I just 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 let them make their twenty dollars. It's it's fine. Yeah. Like whatever. Just don't sell the pattern. Like don't steal my pattern. But yeah, I used to be against it, but then whatever. Um. Uh. But yeah, half color changes. I like I'm doing them right now on my on the head of my um, sloth. sloth. And I love doing half color changes because I think it makes the stitches look really good. But I know <laughs> that people don't like doing it because it is a complicated, it's a comp, like I noticed that you didn't do half color changes I don't think on your sloth, right? No, um, I, like I've been practicing but my tension is still quite off when I do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you pull it, the, the the half color change part, like when I'm using this brown, there it just pulls really tight. It's a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing to do, but I do love doing them. But I do like the very crisp line that you get from the mm -hmm. um, color change. Yeah, I was trying to do yarn unders, um, the other day to try to like, uh see how you do yarn unders because you use yarn unders quite a lot and do, do you primarily still just use yarn unders like you did it for this rhino it looks yeah like. um so i i used to do yarn overs but then um there's just the way that the stitch looks with the other method that i really really like mm -hmm. um like my camera's a little dark but um like the single crochet is like there's just like I don't yeah. even know how to describe it. There's like the one loop that sort of like crosses over. Yeah, yeah, like the, 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 that makes the real X kind of look yeah. to it. Yeah, I think it, it is really cool. Um, 
it is really difficult to do for a long period of time when you don't when you haven't been using it uh, for me at least I have a very difficult time continually using yarn unders hey dude I'm you doing these crocheting around using like a well the back of mine is just a mess but uh, I'm doing that where you were saying like if you crochet around another th piece of color it seems like it's working really well but it is it does complicate things when did you um uh, feel that you had like a style when did you like um, accept that I guess well, speaking of speaking of books, um, a, a few years ago, like my partner and I, we did put out a book of twelve of my crochet patterns. Oh, cool! And uh, like that was like the whole making a book process. Like that was such a learning, like mm -hmm. huge learning curve. Um, but I think that's when I that's when I had to sort of definitively um, like have a style, just to make sure that my patterns sort of stand out. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I think the book's been out for, uh, I think five or six years now. How did that do? How did that, like how, selling a book on, like, how did, how did it do? So, uh, great. Um, so at first I was really only just selling at markets. Um, and then we listed it on Amazon and it's, it's really great. It's like nice passive income. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we've been able to pay for vacations using, Oh really? From the See, yeah. exactly what I'm saying. I gotta get into that. It, it's just a great way to reach new crocheters, too, because people are looking up how to crochet books <clears throat> way often there. Although, because like the patterns in that book, there's like quite old now, and my style has like sort of evolved. Yeah. Then, um, I sort of cringe at some of the patterns in there. I, I cringe at my patterns too from the past, even like just a year ago. I'll cringe at my patterns and be like, oh man, like I could do that so much better now. Like even just the magic loop, like that, I was using that old magic loop for so long up to like not even a year ago. And now when I look at my older videos, I'm like, man, what a complicated magic loop I was doing. Why was I could do that so much better now? And like, you don't even want to think about having to redo everything. Yeah, like, oh, what a process. I do like to redo patterns like once every now and then like especially like really really old ones um i do like to redo the, like i have a yoshi that i really want to redo that's from like five years ago it just needs a it needs an upgrade for sure revamp, yeah yeah it also gives you a chance to like just totally change it change the design okay wait, i'm supposed to crochet around using an extra thing of white that. It's. Do you have any? Do you have a favorite tool right now? Um. Tool to like use while I'm crocheting. Yeah. Um. I think my favorite tool recently has just been a skewer, like a a stick like this. I it's over, it's over there, but it's just like a stick with a little bit of tape around it with a you know, a pointed point of the skewer to like stuff in my um, knots and stuff. But other than that, just my crochet hook. How about you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do, I, I, I really, really like using a bent tip yarn needle. Oh my God, yeah, those are, that's, that's just a necessity for me now. Using a not bent tip yarn needle, it's like, what am I doing? <laughs> that's so difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's so weird. Like I, there was this one day where I just didn't have my regular tool, so I had to use a regular, just a straight needle. Mm -hmm. it, 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 just having that like slightly bent tip just helps the sewing so much. So much, yeah. It like, yeah, it is a life changer for sure. Um, I've also found that using a tiny itty bitty crochet hook, like a size, um, like E or maybe even smaller. Um, is really cool to do, to use for sewing, for for helping like uh, add threads into it instead of having to like thread it onto a needle. You just poke the crochet hook through and hook and pull through. Oh yeah, that's yeah. been really cool for me. I, I've been trying that recently. And it's been nice. Have you have you seen 
um, like micro crochet before. Oh my god, but... yeah. I've done a few micro crochet projects, but it is very difficult. Um, um like when they use embroidery thread and like mm -hmm. the smallest hook imaginable. Yeah, I have a um where is it? I think it's right yeah, right here actually. I have a little itty bitty skull that I made using embroidery thread and I put it on a little tiny crochet hook. And <laughs> there's it's really fun to do, but oh my god, does it give you a headache. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah. You you should There's give a it a shot. It's really it's but whatever you use, whatever you make with it, make it something that you don't have to sew together because sewing together with that too, yeah, that's like a whole thing, you know. So there's an artist that I follow on Instagram, and uh, they're from Japan, and they they make pieces where they have to sew them, oh. but they are so small they oh like God. fit on like they rest on like the tip of your finger. That's wild. But I, I just don't understand how you would sew like little arms and little legs onto them. Like, I feel like you need a magnifying glass or something. Yeah, but like even like your hands are just so big. Like, how do you even... Like, how do you have the patience for that? <laughs> yeah, just to manage everything. I just don't understand it. And then, and then what do you do with it? <laughs> uh, that like, I have, all, I have a few of these mini crochet things. I'm like... Okay, what do I do with it now? <laughs> okay, now what? Um, where was I? Top of the head. Yeah, okay. Chirp a little oh. follows a few micro crochets on Etsy, I guess. Hmm. I wonder how I wonder how prevalent it is to to sell micro crochet on Etsy. Oh, Lizzie already has your book. Yeah, thank you, Lizzie. That's and cool. Also, thank you, Aquatic Luna. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the keyboard pattern. Oh, I love how you did the eyes of the keyboard pattern. Oh, that was like, I had so many prototypes to get that right. I could tell. I could tell just from the pattern, like, man, that must have taken some effort. Does it? it it's sewn right onto the head, though, too, right? You're not like um crocheting it around like a so like the skull piece you mean mm -hmm. so it's like a completely separate piece like i wanted it to be um like it it doesn't fit over the head like a helmet but i did want it to be like a its own separate piece does what is what does cubone's head look like under the helmet um it's it's just like a, a plain uh, it's a very plain spherical head oh, okay yeah, and then you just sort of like fit the skull over it and then just sew it away to hide the head. That's cool. Yeah, it looked complicated. It looked like a really fun pattern to make, too. Uh, Icy Reaper says with her micro crochet, what you do with them is you vacuum them up into the void. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To the vacuum world. Do you have a pattern where you like you were just very, very surprised at the positive reception behind it yeah a few of them like the the miniature heart that i made like last year is one of the my most viewed patterns now and i'm pretty surprised about that one because i'm like there's a bunch of mini heart patterns i don't know why mine did so well um what other ones sometimes i'm surprised when patterns <laughs> let certain patterns that don't do really well where i'm like really this is such a good pattern though <laughs> like what like the little miniature stars that i did last month or yeah. last month they they didn't perform very well and i was like why I, these are such cool patterns like whatever i mean you know teach their own but you guys are wrong these are good patterns <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like it's always so surprising to me. Like sometimes I'll have patterns where like they're very involved and like they're just very detailed. And I'm like, oh yeah, I nailed this. Like this is so cool. And then people just don't really. Yeah, they just uh, don't yeah. like vibe with it the way you thought that. Yeah. Whereas like I can make, uh, I don't know. Um, oh, this week I, I made just like a little flower. Oh, that, that flower did so well everywhere. I saw it on the front page of Reddit in like three different subreddits. Yeah, it was like insane how popular it went. It came just because like I just thought I was just making like just a flower just for fun. Yeah, but it is very well done. I love the leaves on it. It's very cool. Oh. 
And also, I can't believe you're uh, the rainbow cloud. That one should be doing so. That is a such a cool pattern. I think like when it gets closer to Pride, I'll I'll like re-release yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. It is a really cool pattern. I I I like how you made the um how you did the cloud flat and then like crochet around it. It's very cool. Yeah, and then um I I did have a lot of trouble writing that pattern because um I don't know if you've ever done it, but you single crochet backwards. Yeah, I like, saw I, you doing that. I was crazy. I didn't. I, I was trying to look it up and see if it was like a thing, like it was an actual stitch, but I just I couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah, I I, I know what you're talking about though. I, um, in your pattern, I I've seen you do it. It's very interesting. Like where instead of going into the front of the stitch, you're going from the back. Yeah, you're like going like, yeah, like that, and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super weird. Super yeah, cool. Yeah, but I just I couldn't find it anywhere on the internet. Like to just give it like a proper name. Yeah, like a backward. Yeah, that's that's some of the fun parts though. Like coming up with a name of a stitch. And when you come up with a stitch that you've never seen anybody do before, and you're like, oh, I'm a genius. <laughs> I did it. I came up with something brand new that no one's ever done before. And then you find out someone's done it, <laughs> and you're like, oh, well. Now it's, oh, Melbo says, is that called the crab stitch? So maybe it's a crab stitch. So I think I looked up the crab stitch because I, I, I searched up backwards single crochet and it's something that's very different. Okay. Backwards single crochet. I'm going to have to redo. I did the, um, I started to work on it and then I got lost in whatever I was watching at the time. <laughs> and then I stopped. And so I have it like another one of my many half projects. Which I'm sure you have like, do you have a bucket oh. of half projects like me? Yeah, just like little body parts. Uh -huh. everywhere. Yeah. Body um, parts for the everywhere. rainbow pattern, I did borrow um, the technique that you used for the uh, the gift box. Oh, really? Working into like the, the In like the back, back loop. loop of the, yeah. Yeah, what, what, what would we say? I guess that is exactly what it is. You're working into the back. The loop of the. You can't thing. say back loop because that's something different. Yeah, it's like the back back loop, the reverse <laughs> loop. I don't know. We use that on the rainbow. Yeah, I did just to like because I wanted the way that I wanted it was to have like a very clean like edge between the colors. Mm-hmm. Um. So I, I I played around with like that backward single crochet, and then mixing that with your back back loop gave it the exact um what like texture that i wanted uh-huh i'm gonna but, check that out yeah but again like it's just like one of those things where like i have learned so much just from you know using your patterns or you know somebody else's patterns like everyone's got their own like little tricks yeah it's so much fun i really i i can't wait to do more um uh-oh 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 my computer's like glitching out big time right now. Whoa. Hold on. Oh. I'm like super laggy here in my video. Everything's like turning green. Oh boy. I think my graphics card's having a hard time keeping up with everything. I think Zoom does eat quite a bit of uh, memory. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, no, it's lagging a bunch. Someone's asking if it's lagging. It's my computer. It's having a hard time keeping up with things right now. Oh my goodness. You can hear me, right? Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Hold on. Is our audio still okay? I'm gonna minimize that. I'm trying to close certain applications maybe to speed things up a little bit. I'm pretty sure my thing might crash though. Hold on. Quit. 
I'm, I'm seeing all the comments about how how uh, my crochet hook is a five millimeter, and I'm still crocheting pretty tightly. Yeah, you just crochet a little tighter than normal, I think, right? Yeah, because whenever I use a four millimeter, it's just it's really hard to get into the stitches for me. Mm -hmm. Man, is it? Am I getting anything on this camera? Uh uh. Oh, I am. I am. But I'm just lagging like heck. I'm wondering what I should do.